my friends, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where today I'm working on a little side project. I'm recreating a sign that some of you may recognize from Disneyland Park. Now this is a sign from the park that isn't particularly well known or famous or anything, so don't get too excited. It's actually a piece of the theming on the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Uh, if, as you go up the second lift hill, look to the left, and there's a sign, a little wooden sign that's uh, heavily weathered and very rustic, and it says uh, danger blasting area ahead. And it sets up the, the gags to come, because as you climb that hill a little further, on the right-hand side is the famous goat chewing on a stick of dynamite. Now, since I have that scene, I've replicated that the goat trick, the goat chewing on dynamite on the Thunder Mesa layout. I thought it would be fun to have a recreation of that sign from Disneyland to hang here in the studio. So I've already built a wooden signboard uh, based on some photographs that I found. I was able to find a few uh, okay photographs online of the sign. Kind of low resolution, but good enough for my purposes here. So I've built the signboard, and now I'm getting ready to, uh, to paint and weather this, and then do the actual lettering on it. But before we jump into that, uh, let's back up a little bit to earlier this morning, and I'll show you how I put this together. I had some scraps of old pine 1x4 laying around that I thought would be just perfect for this project, so I cut three pieces to 14 inches long. Then I used a couple of sharp chisels to distress the sides and ends of the boards, adding the exaggerated cracks and splits found on so many of the Frontierland signs. A little light sanding after that helped clean things up. I also used the blade of my back saw to help weather the wood grain, dragging it along each board to make shallow grooves. To finish up, I cut a pair of 1x2s to brace the back of the sign, placing them about 2 inches in from the ends. I purposefully misaligned the board slightly and then secured everything together with some one and a quarter inch coarse drywall screws. So now that I'm ready to um, paint and finish this, uh, this thing, um, I think the first thing I want to do is give it a, uh, an old weathered sort of barnwood look. And so I'm going to be trying a, a new product, at least new for me. I haven't used this before. It's uh, Minwax Wood Effects, which gives you a weathered gray look in minutes, it says. And um, just brush on bare wood, unique results every single time. Well, that's exactly what we want, right? We want unique results. By the way, you know, if you're familiar with this sign at Disneyland, you'll notice that I'm not trying to recreate an exact replica. This is not like an exact, you know, prop replica. I'm just, uh, I, for one thing, the one at Disneyland has four boards. I've got three. Mine's a little smaller, etc. Um, what I'm just trying to do here is evoke the look and feel of the sign that's at the park. And it says, the instructions say to stir well, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Sure, it looks very thin. But then it says to uh, brush with the grain. And hopefully this will work similar to the uh, India, India ink dyes that I use uh, to stain wood for my little projects on the lamp, soak back into all of these cracks and crevices, and give me the look of old weathered wood. That's the idea, anyway. Well, that's looking pretty okay, but I think I want to darken it for the second coat. Get a little bit richer. Once again, we wait. Well, it turned out pretty good. I'm I'm quite pleased with this. But this is just the first step in the uh, painting and finishing process. Now I want to get kind of a barn red color on here because I noticed on the on the prototype at the park it has kind of a peeling mottled weathered barn red color. And to do that, we're going to use acrylic paints. 
and I'm using uh, some burnt sienna. These are just cheapo craft store acrylics. So I'm going to go about half and half burnt sienna and burnt umber. Darken that up a little bit. Burnt sienna on its own, a little red oxide shade would be probably too bright for what I want here. Yeah. And to apply this, I'm going to try I'm going to try to dry brush it on, I think, and see what kind of results we get doing that. And since this uh, is much bigger than my usual projects, I'm going to use a bigger brush. I've got a stiff two inch brush from the hardware store. Getting most of the paint off. I'm going to dry brush this. First, I like to go against the grain. There we go. That's the look we want right there. Now I'm going to go back and stamp some of this color on, stipple it on with the brush. Use a little bit of pure burnt umber in there to darken up here and there. What I'm thinking is, as I look at this, it really needs a third shade, probably a gray. that dry for a little bit. I think I want to hang on to this gray color though. Now I am not a, uh, a sign painter <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, a sign painter, you know, might just take a big flat brush and go in here and just should do it. You know, I've seen them work and it, they're amazing. I can't do that. I don't have that skill. So I have to approach this um, from uh, use, using my graphic design, graphic art background. Um, <laughs> So what I've done is I took the, uh, the photo from the sign at the park and I blew it up on my computer uh, to fit full size on this 11 by, roughly 11 by 14 surface um, and then printed it out on two sheets so then I can trace it onto the boards here. But first I need to make these two sheets into one sheet. I have to tile it together make, to make one um, graphic that I can use. That piece. Take that piece off. Now I can match that up. I don't want to put tape over the tops of the letters themselves because I'm going to be tracing over those in a minute enough to hold these two sheets together. Now I just need a way to figure out a way to transfer the shapes of these letters onto my board. And I did mention tracing. Um, but obviously I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't see through this like tracing paper uh, to do that. But fortunately, Grasshopper, there's more than one way to skin a cat. What I can do is an old graphic artist trick, also used by sign painters, as I understand. Take a piece of graphite, and I'm going to coat the back. Oh, you can also see making a print of all the cut marks on my cutting mat. I'm going to put a layer of graphite on the back of this. These are just regular graphite sticks. You can get it at any art supply store. 
I regularly use them uh, on my track to keep the trains moving well, because graphite is an excellent conductor of electricity. So it doesn't have to be too neat and tidy, just get it enough on here so that when I transfer those, when I trace over those letters with a hard lead pencil, it'll leave a graphite line, a matching graphite line on the board. Ew, need to wash my hands. Now, I can, is this the top? Is this what I want the top? Yeah. I can carefully tape this on to the board. A little masking tape. And now, use a hard lead pencil, like a 5 inch pencil, and I'll go around and trace all of these letters. Pressing, pressing down pretty hard to make that uh, line transfer. I'm trying to get all the little groovy little nuances of these letters. I'm almost pressing hard enough to go through the paper. In fact, I am going through the paper at the places where the boards meet, those seams. That's no problem. As long as I don't ruin my uh, my graphic here before I'm done with it, I want to check real quick, make sure the uh, letters are transferring properly. So I'm just going to lift the tape, keeping this registered as much as I can. Yes, I can see that just fine. Good. My plan is working. On we go. Let's see how we did. I don't know if you can see that. It's faint, but it's there. To paint the letters, I'm using a color called uh, unbleached titanium, which is an off-white, sort of a almost a very light tan. It's actually one of my favorite colors to use on the scenery scenery on the uh, Thunder Mesa layout. And then I have a selection of soft brushes here. Originally this was probably painted with uh, a flat brush, a flat sign painter's brush, but uh, once again since I'm an artist and not a sign painter I'm going to do my best to uh, just kind of fake it with these brushes. We'll see how it turns out. And of course I do not mean to insinuate at all that sign painters are not artists. They are phenomenal artists, like pinstripers, you know. Nothing but the utmost respect for those guys. Now, while I'm painting this and trying to match the outline, I'm also uh, keeping in mind that these letters are supposed to be quite weathered. Kind of building some of that in. Very happy with that. Turned out real nice. <laughs> Nothing beats a hand painted look, I'll tell you. But now I'm going to go back over my carefully hand painted letters and um, age everything a little bit more with a steel brush. Take some of that paint back off. It's 
So yeah, I'm looking here on my on my graphic where it's been worn away. I'll tell you, I honestly don't know if that's uh, painting effects done by uh, WDI or facilities at the park or actual age. <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. I'm going with the grain here. There we go. Now we're starting to get the look. I can take a little sandpaper, fold it over, and use the crease to add a little bit more wear and tear here and there. And the very last thing, take some of this gray that I mixed up earlier, do some light dry brushing just around the edges here. Now the only thing left to do is to figure out how we're going to hang this. We've got a couple of eye screws right here. Measure down two inches from the top on each side. That is the top, right? Double check. <laughs> I hate it when I hang things upside down. Got some picture wire. All right, that's ready to hang up in the studio. Ah, one more thing. I can live right there for now. Not a bad spot. I'll probably uh, move it someplace else later on, especially when I get around to this expansion of the layout that's going to happen over here. But for now, that's a good spot for it. And that is going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you all so much for coming along with me on that little uh, side project. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa or see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. Or if you really like what we're doing here on the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, everybody. Adios for now.